A 20 year old who admitted involvement in four murders and escaped prison last year has been sentenced to 55 to 110 years behind bars. Amin Hurst entered guilty pleas to four counts of third degree murder earlier this month. Prosecutors say his spree of violence began when he was 16. Amin Hurst, born in September of 2004, was raised into a family facing struggles. Amin was raised by a single mother. His father, who was barely present in his life, was not the steady influence he might have needed, contributing to early instability. His mother, a figure in the streets herself, was incarcerated for two to three years during Amin's childhood, which added to the chaos. Her time in jail had a significant impact on him. While she was away, Amin lived with other family members and became more exposed to the harsh realities of life on the streets. The absence of a steady parental figure left Amin vulnerable, and the void was filled by the tough, often dangerous street culture around him. From a young age, Amin displayed a rebellious streak. He was quickly immersed in the world of street life in West Philadelphia, where survival often meant aligning with the local crews and engaging in risky behaviors. This period of his childhood shaped him, teaching him survival instincts but also embedding him in a world of violence and crime. As he grew into his teenage years, Amin's interactions with the street culture deepened. By the time Amin reached his teenage years, he had already crossed lines that many never returned from. His association with 616 or the Fixers, who come from 61st and Jefferson, and 66 and Lansdowne fueled his rise within the street, and his hardened attitude toward life only solidified as he became more entangled in gang violence. On April 20th, 2021, Amin Hurst was arrested and charged with two counts of robbery, two counts of attempted murder, and four separate murders that happened across Philadelphia. The first murder Hearst was implicated happened on Christmas Eve in 2020. At around 11.30 a.m., Philadelphia's 19th District officers responded to reports of gunfire in the 1800 block of Wynwood Road in the Overbrook section of the city. When they arrived, they discovered 20-year-old Daiwu Nishan Scruggs suffering from multiple gunshot wounds across his body. He was rushed to Lankanau Medical Center, but sadly, Daiwu later died from his injuries. Scruggs was known to his peers as Wu X Biddy, a social media comedian. A former football coach at Frankfurt High School, Bill Sitzma, confirmed that Scruggs was a former player of his. Sitzma spoke about Scruggs' personality, describing him as a fun-loving comedic young man who enjoyed making people laugh. At the time of his death, Wu was live streaming on Instagram. At the time of the reports, Philadelphia police had not made any arrests related to the shooting. An investigation was underway to determine the cause and circumstances surrounding the deadly incident. The second shooting occurred on March 11, 2021, in the Overbrook section of Philadelphia, where multiple people were caught in a violent attack that left two individuals dead and others severely injured. The tragic incident unfolded in the afternoon on the 1400 block of North 76th Street, where four people were shot while sitting in a parked car. They attacked allegedly sneaked up behind the car before letting off shots. We begin tonight with breaking news. One person is dead, three others fighting for their lives after a shooting in Overbrook Park. It happened in the 1400 block of North 76th Street. Police say a 24-year-old was killed, a 30-year-old, 19-year-old, and 16-year-old critically injured. Police Commissioner Daniel Outlaw says the victims had already been driven to the hospital before officers arrived on scene. Given the number of people shot, at what time, um, just again, just... It's not only puzzling, uh, but it, it leads us to believe that there are more people out here that know about what happened. Chopper 3 live over the scene right now as officers continue to investigate. We will stay on top of this breaking story and bring you updates as soon as we get them. You can always get the latest information at CBS. Among the victims were 24-year-old Naquan Smith and 17-year-old Tamir Brown, both of whom died from their injuries. The other victims, a 19-year-old and a 30-year-old, were rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Fortunately, they survived. Tamir Brown was a local rapper from the Overbrook area, known as Lil Mir, and was a part of a gang, O to the Four, or the Campers, which you might recognize currently as a part of CCK. The Campers and 616 were beefing heavy at the time and still are to this day. Tamir was unfortunately another casualty in this war. 
Philadelphia police responded promptly, and the city was left shaken by the violence occurring in broad daylight. The shooting was part of a larger uptick in gun violence in the city during that time. Investigators worked to gather evidence, including witness testimonies and video footage, to identify those responsible for the shooting. Local authorities, including Mayor Jim Kenney, called for a united effort to address the rise in gun violence plaguing the city, emphasizing the urgency to prevent the senseless deaths of a new generation of young people. The third shooting that Hearst was implicated in occurred on March 18, 2021. Eyewitness News. Now at noon, after being behind bars, a man is released and then shot to death on the prison grounds. Good afternoon to you. I'm Janelle Burrell. And I'm Jim Donovan. Welcome to CBS 3 Eyewitness News at noon, now streaming live on CBSN Philly. Police say the man was at a bus stop and ran back to the prison grounds where he was shot to death. Our Dan Koob is live at Curran uh, Fromholds Correctional Facility in Holmesburg with the details. Good afternoon, Dan. Jim, there are so many unanswered questions, but here's what we do know for now, which is Prison Commissioner Blanche Carney telling us that 20-year-old inmate, just 47 minutes after being released from prison, shot and killed on the prison grounds. He has been identified as 20-year-old Rodney Hargrove of Philadelphia, most likely a Germantown area, was released around 1.10 a.m. this morning, posting bail after spending a week behind bars for several charges, which included theft and gun-related charges. Now, according to the prison, Hargrove was waiting for family to pick him up at a SEPTA bus station about three-quarters of a mile down the street here on State Road from the current Fromhold Correctional Facility, where inmates who have just been released are typically dropped off. At that point, a dark-colored vehicle approached the man who ran back onto prison property and through a security gate. The prison says the car was able to advance past that security gate where they shot Hargrove at least 10 times. Why that gate was up is unclear, and the prison says they are currently investigating. They say a guard was on duty at the time and that the arm is opened manually. It's raised by the correctional officer assigned to that post. And for whatever reason, the officer raised it, and at the time of the pursuit, the officer, the vehicle was able to proceed through that ar raised arm. We're surveilling um, our uh, our video if we have any, and we'll cooperate fully with the police. If we determine that there is video, we'll share it. Now there is no video from that SEPTA bus station, so the only reliable information they have on suspects right now is any video that they're able to unearth from prison property. That's the latest here from Northeast Philadelphia. Dan Goof, CBS3 Eyewitness News. All right, Dan, thanks for that update. Hargrove had been incarcerated since March 11th, facing charges for receiving stolen property, carrying a firearm without a license, and fleeing from police. Hargrove was freed from jail on bail early in the morning and, as per standard procedure, was driven by corrections officers to a bus stop near the prison. Shortly after, a dark-colored vehicle began chasing him, and he ran back toward the security gates of the prison. The car followed him onto the prison grounds by bypassing a raised security gate, and the shooter in the vehicle fatally shot Hargrove. After the shooting, the vehicle sped away. Prison officials launched an investigation into the killing, reviewing security footage to see if the shooting had been captured on camera. At the time, it was unclear whether the crime was related to the charges Hargrove was facing, and there were no immediate arrests. Authorities also noted that Hargrove had been arrested previously in January 2020 on related charges. This tragic event highlighted concerns about the jail's release practices, as inmates were sometimes released late at night without their personal belongings or proper resources. Though reforms had been made to address this, the late-night releases continued. The case drew attention to the vulnerability of inmates who were freed under such circumstances. Hargrove's family later sued the jail for his death. In between these two shootings, Hearst had also allegedly robbed two gas stations. It all came to an end for Hearst on April 20th on 2021 when U.S. Marshal arrested Hearst and charged him with all four murders and the robberies. While waiting for his trail to start Amin, Hearst along with another inmate managed to escape prison. Amin Hearst and Nasser Grant escaped from the Philadelphia Industrial Correctional Center on May 7th, 2023. The two managed to cut through a fence in the prison yard during a period when inmates were granted yard access. This was a critical lapse, as officials didn't realize the pair was missing until more than 19 hours later, despite them missing several headcounts. They had been housed in the same unit, though in separate cells. The men were assisted in their escape by Siani Stalling, a woman who had previously been incarcerated at PCC. She reportedly helped coordinate their escape by facilitating communication with one of the men and arranging for a pickup. Stalling was arrested soon after the escape and charged with conspiracy, escape, and hindering apprehension. 
Michael Abrams, another member of 616, was charged in connection with the escape of Amin Hurst and Nasser Grant. Abrams was involved in the escape through his association with Hurst, who reportedly contacted him after breaking out of the Philadelphia Industrial Correctional Facility. Hurst reached out to Abrams while he was on the run, with the two being linked through gang ties. Abrams was charged for his role in assisting the escape and the evasion of law enforcement. Nasser Grant was captured in Philadelphia on May 10, 2023. He was found disguised in full female Muslim garb and a head covering, attempting to evade capture. U.S. Marshals tracked him down in a North Philadelphia area where he had been hiding. He was arrested on the 2800 block of Dauphin Street. Thursday night and the big story on Action News is breaking news. Action News has just learned that one of the two inmates who escaped from the Philadelphia Industrial Correctional Center in Holmesburg five days ago has been caught tonight. Sources confirmed that Nasir Grant was captured this evening in Strawberry Mansion. The 24 year old was being held on narcotics and gun violations. Police are still searching for 18 year old Amin Hurst, who's accused of killing four people. He's still on the run. The two escaped Sunday evening. It's not yet clear how police tracked down Grant, but let's take a live look from Chopper 6 right now over the scene of the arrest. This is the 2900 block of Dauphin Street in Strawberry Mansion. You can see a heavy police presence here. Of course, we'll bring you the very latest on this arrest, but once again, one of the two inmates who escaped over the weekend from a Philadelphia prison is in custody tonight. We'll continue to follow this breaking news story on air and online. Amin Hurst remained on the run until May 17, 2023. Law enforcement, after tracking multiple leads, apprehended him without incident at 6100 Washington Avenue in Philadelphia. He was caught entering a car with his mother and brother. These arrests followed a coordinated investigation spanning Pennsylvania, New York, and Delaware, with four other individuals charged for their involvement in the escape. Officials have caught the second inmate who escaped from a prison in Philadelphia's Holmesburg neighborhood and now a family member is also facing charges. Jan Carabeo is here now with us to break down how investigators were able to capture him. Jan, good morning. Janelle, good morning. Amin Hurst was on the run for 10 days in a search that spanned three states. This morning, he is back behind bars, and now so is his brother. Check it out. Authorities caught up with 18-year-old Amin Hurst in Cobbs Creek yesterday morning near 61st Street and Washington Avenue. These photos here show U.S. Marshals placing the 18-year-old into custody. Last night, CBS News Philadelphia was there as community leaders went door-to-door -door in the neighborhood speaking with concerned neighbors. Now, it had been more than a week since Hearst escaped from a Philadelphia Corrections Center. He's accused of committing four murders. U.S. Marshals say they had been negotiating with Hearst's family, but they missed several deadlines to turn him in. And then officials say they got a break in the case when someone from Hearst's family called them Tuesday night. We identified Hearst coming out of a house on the 6100 block of Washington Avenue and enter a vehicle with two family members. At that time, a vehicle containment was conducted as the vehicle tried to pull off the block and Hearst was identified and taken into custody without incident. Hearst's brother, Amir Woods, was also arrested yesterday for allegedly helping Hearst and 24-year-old Nasir Grant escape. Grant there was recaptured in North Philadelphia last Thursday. Three other people have been charged in assisting with the escape as well. Officials say after Hearst and Grant escaped, several hours went by before anyone listed them as missing, even though there were three headcounts taken in that time. The investigation into how that happened continues. Jim. On November 1st, 2024, Amin Hurst, now 20 years old, faced the consequences of his violent crimes, pleading guilty to four murders, two robberies, and his dramatic escape from jail. The court hearing marked the resolution of a case that had begun when Hurst was just 16 years old. He was arrested in 2021 after a series of deadly shootings and robberies linked to gang violence, specifically his affiliation with the 616 Fixers Group. Hurst's criminal activities began in late 2020, when he was implicated in the shooting death of Daiwu Scruggs, a 20-year-old aspiring comedian and influencer who was killed while on his way to work on December 24, 2020. The ambush was broadcast live on Instagram, and Hearst shot Scruggs at least 16 times. The violence escalated with the March 11, 2021 attack, where Hearst shot four men from a rival gang on 76th Street in West Philadelphia, killing Naquan Smith, 24, and Tamir Brown, 17. In a jail call, Hearst callously laughed about the crime and mocked Brown's dying words. Just a week later, 
Hurst and his crew mistakenly killed Rodney Hargrove, thinking he was a rival gang member. In addition to the murders, Hurst also pleads guilty to armed robberies that took place in West Philadelphia, contributing further to his violent criminal record. On May 7, 2023, while awaiting trial, Hurst staged a prison escape from the Philadelphia Industrial Correctional Facility. Using a cut hole in the prison fence and scaling barbed wire, Hurst, alongside fellow escapee Nasser Grant, managed to flee the facility. The pair, with the help of an inmate lookout, evaded capture for 10 days. During this time, Hurst even traveled to New York City, recorded a rap song, and rented a studio. Hurst was captured after a nationwide manhunt and returned to custody after being found in New York City. Court Proceedings In November 2024, Hurst pleaded guilty to four counts of third-degree murder, two counts of attempted murder, escape, illegal gun possession, and numerous conspiracy charges. The court documents revealed recordings where Hurst laughed about his crimes, showing his utter lack of remorse. On November 14, 2024, Amin Hurst was ultimately sentenced to 55 to 110 years in prison for four murders, robberies, and escaping jail. The sentence was handed down by Common Pleas Court Judge J. Scott O'Keefe. This lengthy sentence came after Hearst as a 16-year-old had committed violent crimes that shocked the city of Philadelphia. Hearst had been arrested at the age of 16 for killing four individuals and committing two armed robberies. He was convicted of shooting his victims multiple times, and he even laughed about the killings and jail calls, demonstrating the lack of remorse and callousness in his actions. Prosecutors emphasized his glorification of gun violence, his attitude towards his victims, and his chilling disregard for human life, particularly when he bragged about the murders. After hearing his sentence, Hearst turned to his defense lawyer, Gary Silver, and angrily shouted, You told me, bro! I should fuck you up! Before clenching his fists. He was led out of the courtroom in shackles. During the sentencing, Hearst had expressed regret and begged for mercy. His defense team, led by Silver, appealed to the judge for leniency, citing Hearst's troubled childhood and mental health struggles. They emphasized his age, arguing that he had not fully matured and had been influenced by a difficult upbringing. Silver requested a sentence of 20 to 50 years, but the prosecution argued that Hearst's violent actions warranted a much harsher penalty. In contrast, the victims' families provided harrowing testimonies. They spoke about the loss of their loved ones, the trauma they'd endured, and the lasting pain caused by the murders. One family member recalled how the death of Rodney Hargrove, a victim of mistaken identity, devastated their family, causing his grandmother's health to rapidly decline. Another relative described how their faith had been shaken by the crime, with one relative even stating that they could no longer preach about forgiveness. Assistant District Attorney Anthony Voci presented a damning collection of evidence, including videos showing Hearst laughing about his actions in jail, where he mocked the victim's last words. Voci expressed that while Hearst had finally admitted guilt, there was little credit to be given for his late acknowledgement, given the overwhelming evidence and his lack of remorse during the crimes. As the proceedings unfolded, Hearst's attempts to express remorse were seen as insufficient, especially after he had been caught escaping from jail in May 2023, sparking a citywide manhunt. He was on the run for 10 days, and during that time, he even recorded a rap song boasting about his crimes. Prosecutors argued that this act of escaping showed Hearst's contempt for the law, further strengthening the argument for his lengthy sentence. When Judge O'Keefe handed down the sentence, there was a wave of emotion in the courtroom. While nearly 60 people had come to support Hearst, the sentencing left the families of the victims in the courtroom visibly moved. After the ruling, some of Hearst's supporters cried out, We love you, but Hearst was led away in handcuffs, facing decades behind bars. Hearst's defense team had hoped for a lighter sentence, but the severity of his crimes, including the brutal murders, the jail escape, and his apparent lack of remorse, led to the judge's decision to impose a long prison term. Amin Hearst, or Lil Scatted as he calls himself, was sentenced to 55 to 110 years in prison, and he will likely spend the rest of his life behind bars. For those who follow stories like this, you know how quickly everything can change. If you want more stories like this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for the latest updates.